I want to welcome you this morning to this dedication ceremony. My name is Dan Bernardo. I'm the Dean of the College of Agricultural, Human, and Natural Resource Sciences. Some of you that are alumni of our uh, college, um, you know, that's the College of Ag and the College of Home Ec combined. <clears throat> Again, it's a pleasure to welcome you to the dedication of the Charles Gardner Shaw Mycological Herbarium. I want to welcome members of the Shaw family who are here with us today. That includes uh, Dr. Shaw's two sons, Terry, as well as his wife, Cynthia, and their son, Kevin and Danielle. And Kevin and Danielle get the Distance Award. They flew in from Indianapolis, so we appreciate you doing that and uh, hope you have a good Cougar Saturday. Uh, we also have Mark and his son, Ian, who are here with us today. So we appreciate uh, the members of the Shaw family coming today. Unfortunately, Dr. Shaw's wife, Esther, and daughter, Sherry Tabor, and son-in-law, John, weren't able to make it today, but we are filming today. Right, so, um, so welcome as well to Esther, Sherry, and John, and we'll share with them, with them this, this film of the ceremony so they can share in the joy. <clears throat> we also want to thank all of you friends of Dr. Shaw and uh, the Department of Plant Pathology and just um, fungi people in general for coming today. Um, one thing I have definitely grown to appreciate in this role is fungi. Uh, and that most of the credit for that goes to uh, my good friend Dr. Rogers who's uh, helped me appreciate fungi's role in society. <laughs> We'd uh, like to particularly give special thanks to the Shaw family, Mrs. Shaw, Terry, Mark, and Sherry, whose generous gifts made this happen today by establishing an endowment that permanently funds the herbarium. We are honored by their support and inspired by the tenacity with which they work to secure these funds and this fitting tribute to their dad. <clears throat> well, we are gathered today to, of course, to honor the important legacy of Dr. Shaw. Many of you know Dr. Shaw. You, we have a lot of plant pathology graduate students here. It's important for them to understand the legacy of, of the discipline and the contributions WSU has made to that discipline. And um, we, it wouldn't be, uh, we wouldn't be fulfilled unless we said that we have the largest plant pathology graduate program in the nation. Where's Hanu? I probably stole some of his thunder, but you know, he's, 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 he's pounded that into me so that I definitely know it. So he's a, he, um, when Professor Shaw uh, came to WSU, uh, he taught and researched in the area of forest pathology and mycology. Mycology, of course, the study of fungi. Uh, he was the department chair of the Department of Plant Pathology from 1960 to 1972, established an important legacy of excellence with this department. Uh, we still have a standalone Department of Plant Pathology, um, which makes us somewhat unique, and we have one of the larger plant pathology units in the country. Um, I think, you know, partly for, because of the legacy of Dr. Shaw and certainly all of the faculty who contributed to the success. Uh, his efforts resulted in over 130 publications, two of which contain the current concepts which form the basis for classification of all the downy mildews. He advised more than 20 graduate students, some of our faculty on, the, uh, on, on our staff today, including Dr. Holbert and Dr. Karras, had classes from Dr. Shaw, and maybe there's others as well. Um, his published host fungus indices for the PNW are considered seminal works for the biogeography of fungi. So the, the herbarium that we're uh, dedicating today is a long work of progress, a, really a century-long activity. Started in 1915, 
founded by Frederick D. Held and enlarged and improved, of course, by Dr. Shaw, and then doubled in size since then through the work of, uh, of Dr. Rogers and his colleagues. Um, it's our vision and the, division of, and the uh, vision of the department to develop the herbarium into one of the world's top five collections of fungi. And of course, the Shaw gift will be instrumental in securing um, this progress. I'd like to uh, uh, introduce our first speaker today, who I've already made reference to, and that's none other than our department chair, Dr. Hanu Papu. Dr. Papu has been the chair of plant pathology for two years, going on two years? Third year. Third year. Wow. Okay. <laughs> um, he's a great visionary, uh, high energy department chair, and uh, we look forward to his words today. Hanu? Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming on a busy football weekend. and. Uh, that shows that you're able to find a place to park your car. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> and that's, that, that's a feat in itself. Um, as Dan mentioned, yeah, my name is Hanu Papu. I'm the department chair for plant pathology. And um, all I'm going to say is uh, uh, thank the Shah family for uh, your generous contribution. Uh, that would help the herbarium expand even further. Uh, thanks to the continuing efforts of our current faculty, Dr. Rogers, Dr. Caris, and others in the department. Uh, and uh, uh, as Dan mentioned, uh, Plant Pathology Department has a history of uh, excellence, a legacy of excellence, thanks to the faculty and uh, a very vibrant and a strong graduate program. And so having a very strong graduate program means we are going to ensure the, uh, the discipline will continue and we are going to uh, train a qualified scientists for the future. And, and so that's what we are uh, engaged in and we take it very seriously. And again, um, Events like this, dedications like this, uh, would only increase the visibility of the department and would be uh, even uh, a, a continue to be a magnet for highly qualified grad students from all over the country and the world. And Dr. Shah was instrumental in establishing this legacy of ex excellence. And so when I joined the department about a few years ago, I didn't have a choice. The culture of excellence is there, so I better be. <laughs> I better meet those expectations, right? Uh, so it will continue. Uh, so the foundation was laid uh, by faculty like Dr. Shah. And, and so I'm very proud to be part of the department. And I consider myself lucky to be part of WSU. And uh, uh, again, the herbarium is continuing to grow. And uh, a significant milestone that took place thanks to years of effort, uh, dedicated efforts, both personally and professionally, Dr. Rogers and Dr. Caris and many others, now that the herbarium is digitized, uh, thanks to a, a grant from NSF. And, and so here it shows that the faculty are really committed to making this herbarium become a truly world-class uh, collection that is very useful for teaching and research. So I, I again, uh, try to, I'd like to recognize the plant pathology faculty who are instrumental in that. Um, and, and lastly, but not the least, uh, I'd like to thank um, very many people who made this event possible. Uh, WSU Foundation, uh, Roger Patterson is here, and uh, Sharon Morgan, I don't see her, Sharon, yes, and, and uh, Mike Connell, uh, yeah. so from WSU Foundation, they've been very helpful, and within the College of Agriculture, and there's Connors, uh, we have Connors Alumni and Friends, our development office, Carolyn Troy, Carolyn Troy and her wonderful, wonderful, wonderful staff uh, who made this happen, who took care of every single detail. And I really like them because they do all the work and they let me take the credit. <laughs> <laughs> so as far as I'm concerned, it's a win-win situation. <laughs> and also uh, within our Department of Plant Pathology, two very important people who are central to making this happen, uh, Mike Adams and uh, Cheryl Hagelgans. She's our administrative manager. She couldn't be here today. And with that, uh, I again welcome you and thank you for joining us today. Hanu, as an administrator, it's fine to take credit for things <laughs> because you get blamed for plenty of things that you don't have anything to do with either. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh -huh. So, if we wanted to talk about uh, 
Dr. Shaw's legacy and his contributions to the discipline and to WSU. There's no better person I can think of to talk about that than Dr. Jack Rogers, and there's a couple reasons for that, probably three. One is uh, he's a mycologist, so uh, that's important. Uh, he studied the same discipline, has made countless contributions in this area. Second, He's certainly the, uh, um, how do we want to say that politely, Jack? He has the most historical perspective in our college. <laughs> um, and third, he's perhaps the funniest and wittiest speaker that I know. Um, so I'm setting them up so that <laughs> he's going to have to perform. Um, <laughs> Uh, Dr. Rogers has been with us over 40 years. He was department hair head for 12 years as well. A few years ago, 14, pardon me, yeah, okay, 14 years. Uh, he also, uh, a couple years ago, was recognized with the most prestigious faculty award we have, uh, the WSU Eminent Faculty Award. Uh, certainly one of the most renowned mycologists around. In fact, I was I told them I was really excited. I came back from Kauai a couple years ago, and I said I was up on the Kang, up the canyon at the um, whatever it is. The, I don't. It's not a gift shop, but it's a you know whatever tourist stop. And I was going through all the books and nothing. And Jack's material was there, you know, countless times because of all his uh, mycology work on the island of Kauai, which. I kid him because that seems like pretty good duty to me. Um, um, <laughs> you know, but he gets it. You know, it is scholarship. Um, he tells me it is a great location to find fungi. So, so Dr. Rogers, uh, we look forward to your comments. Uh, thank you very much. I just had a birthday on September the third, and, and uh, this uh, Dan's. Uh, uh, remarks are the second time. Uh, very recently I've been reminded that I'm old. <laughs> I want to uh, talk just a little bit. This will not be long. Gardner actually hired me in 1962 to teach forest pathology. He had become chairman and uh, felt that he did not want to teach it anymore. And then when I got here, because of my background and interest in mycology, uh, he and I and Reuben Duran, uh, a great uh, old colleague, uh, started what I think was a, was a world-class mycology program. Gardner actually ran the herbarium with the help of a series of graduate students. And I addressed this to Dan, that the college in, gave him a graduate student every year to help him with the herbarium work. <laughs> Something I might add that I have never had. <laughs> One of Gardner's main contributions was to build a mycological collection separate from the phanerogamic collection, the so-called Owenby Herbarium, named after the great Marion Owenby. Uh, the herbarium had actually been started a long time ago by Charles Vancouver Piper, who was a wonderful botanist and actually not a bad entomologist either. Uh, when Dr. Heald came here, there was a uh, chairman of the botany outfit named Pickett who here, was here for a long time. To put it mildly, Pickett and Heald did not like each other. <laughs> and the, so Heald took the fungal part of the collection and it has become what is now the mycological herbarium <coughs> of WSU. One of Gardner's great contributions was to begin to put this fungal collection into order as separate from the phanerogamic collection. And he did a wonderful job of this. He 
he actually he didn't start but he extended a system of cards where every specimen had an accession number on it and we could talk about this some later that's both a good thing to do and a bad thing to do another thing that Gardner did which has been mentioned was that he published the host fungus index for the Pacific <coughs> Northwest this is a highly useful publication and I might add that our colleague Dean Glovey who is stationed right now at the University of Washington put that online it is accessible internationally a great contribution well just a few things what about Gardner as a person he was extremely bright and he had extraordinary powers of concentration he was the best editor of manuscripts that I ever knew he could take a manuscript that he knew nothing about and do a, a fantastic job of editing it he was a very bright man he loved outside field sports. I would say particularly elk hunting and fishing. He just loved this. And we could talk about this for half a day too, couldn't we, Terry? <laughs> he was an avid and highly knowledgeable collector of stamps, coins, and I talked to Mrs. Shaw, Esther Ann, after Gardner's death. I said, he was a wonderful stamp collector and coin collector, wasn't he? She says, yes, but he says, he was even a better stockbroker. <laughs> <laughs> he was a serious bridge player who did not tolerate sloppy play. <laughs> In fact, playing bridge with Gardner was an ordeal. You better, you better be good at it or, or uh, be submitted to a tongue lashing. I remember one time I made an impossible contract against Gardner and he jumped up and he says if you'd have played that right you'd have never made it. <laughs> <laughs> and he also I might add and I will say this very mildly he knew the value of a dollar Professionally, he was a world's authority on downy mildew fungi, which are really serious pathogens. But he uh, was uh, one of the really great faculty members at WSU, and it gives me great pleasure uh, to uh, be here when they're naming the herbarium for him. There are a couple of names here that are not on this program, but uh, I'm going to ask them to speak. First, I want to introduce uh, Lori Karras, Dr. Lori Karras. And let me say that Lori Karras has been very much involved in the herbarium, and it was through a grant to her from the USDA that we began the long and arduous process of putting this herbarium online. But uh, I will, uh, Dr. Karras actually had uh, Dr. Shaw as a uh, teacher in mycology, something that I never had, and I will certainly let her comment on this. Lori? Thank you, Jack. It's, it's hard to follow in, uh, after, after Jack speaks, but I did indeed have the, um, the, the pleasure, the honor of, of um, taking Gardner Shaw's mycology class. But I, I want to first say something about the herbarium. Uh, it's, it's a little known fact that my association with this herbarium goes back 30 years. And it began when I started here as a master's student in 1980. And there was no room in the graduate student carols for me. And uh, Gardner Shaw graciously uh, made a desk available to me in the herbarium. So in, in a sense, my uh, career here began in the herbarium. And it's interesting that it's, it's continued all these years. 
And perhaps it was something about spending all those months in the herbarium, the smell. I mean, it's, it's, in, in a way, it's like a library. And if you, if you spend much time in a library, you know, I mean, there's just a distinctive, it's, it's, the, it's, it's the peace and quiet, but it's also the smell of the, of the herbarium. Um, maybe that's what did it. I got fungus in my blood because uh, <laughs> here I am 30 years later now, uh, a mycologist. And, and uh, you know, thinking back to taking Gardner Shaw's class, and it's, it's actually, it, it's, it's very good that we have so many of our, our students here, and, and so many of the students who've taken my mycology class, and so maybe these words will mean something to them. Um, you know, when, when you take a mycology class, one of the things that, that, that the uh, instructor usually does is go around and kind of looks over your shoulder and, and uh, asks you to, you know, show to, what, what are you looking at under the microscope? And you know, I do it because I want to make sure the students aren't looking at, say, a plant hair instead of a fungus. Um, that's part of the learning process. But when when Gardner was uh, uh, our our teacher, um, we we kind of hesitated to to ask for help. I mean, he was he was going around and, and he was a very good and enthusiastic instructor. But I, maybe uh, Scott knows what I'm talking about because he had a cigarette in his hand. <laughs> And there was an ash on it about this long. <laughs> and we lived in fear that that ash was going to fall on our head. <laughs> I mean, times have really changed. Um, but uh, I also, uh, one of my best memories of that class, and I did not have the opportunity to take his uh, summer course, and I, I really regret that because I've heard some wonderful stories about it. But he took us out into the woods as part of the class. So we went out on a foray. And load, we got loaded into a van, and, and we went up to Laird Park. And we still take students up to Laird Park. And I think the natural tendency for many, for many people when they get out in the woods and they want to look for fungi is to go as fast as possible and cover as much ground as possible because they're looking for the big fungi. Well, Gardner told us something that sticks with me to this day, and I still tell our students this. And he said, Stay in one spot, because the, the, the most interesting fungi are the small ones. And if you stay in one spot, you're going to see, you're going to see all these wonderful, wonderful organisms. And, and he's absolutely right. And maybe that's why I still study microfungi. And, and I tell my students that as well. Thank you. I'd like to introduce also Frank Dugan. Frank is with the USDA uh, Plant Introduction Unit here a really scholarly mycologist, a great user of the herbarium, a great collector of statistics of one type or another, and author of several books on mycological history. He's a real resource to WSU, and I might add that he was a student of mine in part. Frank. Thanks, Jack. If any of you ever need a really good cure for insomnia, let me know. I have some <laughs> bricks on tap. When I got here this morning, the parking attendant informed me that on football weekends they charge speakers by the word. So this is going to be pretty short. Uh, my actual acquaintance with Gardner Shaw was no more than a couple handshakes, but I'm keenly aware of his legacy and especially uh, about the herbarium subsequent to his retirement. And I just want to uh, inform you of a couple of things that I thought were uh, pretty impressive, that this herbarium has its specimens cited in every major mycological journal in the world. That <coughs> this is certainly an underestimate. This is just fun with Google. Go into Google Scholar, type in the name of the journal, type in the abbreviation WSP, look at what it says to make sure it's not referring to wettable cellular powder or something. Um, and you get, <clears throat> what you learn is that in things like mycologia, mycological research, mycological progress, and so on, there are four or five publications every year that cite this herbarium. And I stress this is an underestimate because I just took the top journals and looked. But this is being, this herbarium is used. I also know uh, thanks to Monique and her colleague Ellen who worked down in the herbarium and are able to ferret some statistics out for me that uh, although the numbers are a little waffly from the early years but according to what they can dig up subsequent to Gardner Shaw's retirement there's been a minimum of 600 requests that have been or for specimens that have been sent out to scientists nationally and internationally 
And of course, many of those translate into publications too. And there's been about 24, uh, about 2,400 specimens added since Shaw retired. And there are now citations uh, accumulating in gene banks, thanks largely to Dr. Karras's efforts, so that the gene bank uh, citations are linked to WSP numbers. And I suspect this kind of thing is going to continue. The, many of, the vast majority of the holdings of the herbarium are now online. And that probably explains why I don't get emails or calls anymore from uh, APHIS people back in Beltsville saying, Frank, please run down to the basement and look up this for me <laughs> and, and scan it and send it back because they, can, they, you know, they just go right there. And I, I use that resource myself. It's absolutely wonderful. So I don't want to belabor the point. I, I meant it when I said a few short words, but I just want to impress upon you that these types of statistics, just even a little playing around on Google, confirms that this is a world-class facility that's being used intensely, and it's cited every year in world-class mycological journals. Thank you all. I simply want to recognize some indispensable people to the herbarium. First, my longtime associate, Mike Adams. Well, the things that Mike has done in the herbarium, for the herbarium, for the whole order are incredible. And I just I can't say enough good things about Mike. I also want to recognize Monique Slifer. Monique and Mike have been instrumental in, in inputting all of these data uh, into, the, into the online thing. And if you go online and look at this and pull up individual specimens, you will find an immense amount of data, including GSP data on all of these specimens, and I just can't say too much for them. Uh, then there is Ellen Johnston, who, does, who is not here today, but has had the routine work of keeping the card file of uh, Dr. Shaw's up, and also uh, filing them and so forth, filing the specimens. And I can't say too much for Kathleen Duncan, who has done much of the technical uh, uh, stuff of putting us online. None of us, and especially me, could do this in any way. And she has been done a remarkable job with a great uh, deal of humor. So I just want to recognize these people. And I want to give them a big hand. The one thing you're always supposed to do when you're uh, emceeing these type of public events is introduce your boss. Um, <laughs> failed to do that. So those of you that, that I hope you, uh, some of you got to meet President Floyd. Uh, he's also an instrumental person, a huge supporter of agriculture for those of you who don't know that. And really somebody who I think uh, the quote in the Capitol Press was from me that he really saved our bacon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember saying that, but it's getting <laughs> quoted a lot. Uh, he really is a supporter of agriculture. We appreciate that. And anybody that sees him, make sure you tell him that I <laughs> followed up, okay? Um, we like to keep him happy. Okay, thanks again, Dr. Rogers. I told you that it would be uh, entertaining as well as um, thorough. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce Terry Shaw, who is going to speak on behalf of the Shaw family. Terry graduated from our college in 1970 and majored in forestry and range management. And he just retired, uh, having a distinguished career with the U.S. Forest Service. So obviously, he spent a lot of time in those forests with his dad, um, hunting fungi, I presume. So Terry. <laughs> Well, I thank you uh, all for coming. This is, this is great. Um, I would like to extend the same thanks that uh, Dean Bernardo did, including Dean Bernardo, for what the administration has done to, to help us pull this off. Uh, President Floyd, uh, Chairman Hanu, and uh, of course Jack Rogers, and uh, an old family colleague that I don't know if he's here or not, Jim Cook, who has been helpful. Where's Jim? There he is. <laughs> Helped me early on with this, and it's just been, been very supportive. Uh, folks from the uh, foundation, 
Carolyn Troy and I have been working on this for quite a while. Uh, Sharon Morgan, uh, a couple other folks there that have, have helped fill in, uh, Britta uh, Nitze and Mary Kay Murray. It's just, just been great. Uh, and thank all of you for, for coming to the dedication. I'd also like to uh, acknowledge that our, our mother is not here. Uh, she'll turn 96 October 15th, and uh, she will enjoy seeing this video, as will my sister. And uh, so we're, we're looking forward to seeing the video ourselves. Um, Dean Bernardo introduced the family. One of the things that, that we, Cynthia and I, didn't know is that our son Kevin and his wife Danielle were coming. So we got that as a surprise. And then we got a double surprise because we're going to be grandparents. <laughs> so you may also know that all of the Shaws that are here and Jack Rogers have bolo, bolo ties on. If you knew my father, he never wore anything but a bolo tie. And so that's a recognition of, of dad that we're all wearing bolo ties. Now, dad loved a good story. And so I'm going to tell some that relate to the herbarium. And those of you that have been around a long, long time may remember that back in the early 50s, and how long before then, I don't know, but in the early 50s, the herbarium was in the upper floors of Holland Library. And as Jack told me before the ceremony this morning, he tries to sneak in every now and then on Saturday mornings and work in the herbarium. Well. Dad would go to the herbariums on Saturday morning at Holland Library, and that was mom's day to get rid of the kids. And so my older sister and I, Sherry, and I spent many Saturday mornings uh, in Holland Library. <laughs> on the fourth floor, I believe it was, in the herbarium. Now, this, does anybody recognize this? That's, it's a skate key, a roller skate key. My sister was constantly getting in trouble because she would go out front of the Hahn Library and roller skate as a nine or ten year old and they didn't like this and so they would they would bring her back to the library and, and she would be in trouble and so I thought this was great and she'd get in trouble. So, <laughs> so dad had to come up with something to for her to do so that she wouldn't constantly be getting in trouble roller skating. So th this is a, a packet of different collections from the herbarium, many of which Dad identified and worked on. Well, my sister's first paid employment was folding these pieces of paper for a penny apiece <laughs> so Dad could put the uh, specimens in there. And that, uh, that kept her out of trouble somewhat, really. <laughs> so I'm going to put this key in her stocking at Christmas. And <laughs> these are not easy to find anymore. But so these, these are specimens from the herbarium that, uh, that Dad I identified. Now, I too would get in trouble in the herbarium. Oh, I, let me finish with my sister. Uh, <laughs> not any more trouble, but I find it very interesting that those early years, uh, we spent a lot of time in that library, and my sister became a librarian. <laughs> so, I used to love to play with these boxes. <laughs> A lot of forest fungi in the herbarium are put in these boxes. I just love the sheen on these boxes when you do them like. And I didn't really understand that they were supposed to stay in the same box. <laughs> and, uh, so I'm, I'm hoping they all got sorted out right in the end. But I, I certainly, as a youngster, moved a few boxes of contents back and forth. At, uh, so we, we did grow up with the herbarium. Uh, I moved out of Holland Library, and, and as my brother Mark uh, came on the scene, he didn't go to the herbarium with Dad, but he did several times go on these uh, field trips that have been mentioned, where they did four uh, field trips or collection of fungi in the forest. And one of his memories is uh, he was young, and he'd crawl under stuff and find this specimen, and, and Dad would grab whichever graduate student was there and said, Mr. Johnson, tell my son what this is. And of course, usually they'd pull some books out and take them a while to, to figure it out. <coughs> um, I also, I, I don't know how many of you know, there's several of you that know me, uh, I am also a plant pathologist. I did get a degree in forestry from WSU, and unless Lori did, I may be the only person in the room that took a class from Jack Rogers. <laughs> You didn't? So, and Jack, you did, okay. Jack's an internationally recognized teacher and he was, it was great. 
Um, but I then went on to Oregon State and got my, my PhD in plant pathology there. And, and Dean Bernardo mentioned the international aspect of, of this herbarium. And I would like to uh, show that I, I helped with that international aspect. This is a, this is a WSP collection number 4090 that, that I made in 1976 in New Zealand. And uh, it was a specimen or uh, an organism new to science at the time. And uh, I got the pleasure of identifying it. And I want to read this because, and, and Jack can tell you, if it, I don't even know if you still have to do descriptions in Latin. Do you, Jack? Still have to do them in Latin. Yeah, for the next two years and then it's going to Okay. So, um, I, I did all this except I had a lot of trouble with the Latin. <laughs> Uh, and it says in this paper, it was published in the Transactions of the British Mycological Society, which uh, international journals were mentioned, that uh, the assistance of professors P. D. P. Rogers and C. Gardner Shaw with the Latin description is most appreciated. Now, Latin is the only class I got a C in in high school here in Pullman, so I really needed help with the Latin in this, and both, both Dad and Jack helped do that. So. so the herbarium uh, is really a family legacy. We, we all grew up with it. and. Uh, uh, Mike Adams was telling me this morning that uh, by his rough count there are 2,000 specimens that dad actually collected and put in the herbarium and some 4,000 that he attributed or identified personally. Um, as a forest pathologist I, I uh, can, can also testify to how useful the host fungus index is for, from the forestry side point and, and just about everybody in forest pathology in the West has a copy of that. And I actually didn't know it was online, Jack. I'm really glad, really glad to hear that. And so I, again, just with a, with a very big thank you um, to everyone's here, and uh, again to our mother, if you, if you uh, think, those of you who knew her, if uh, you're thinking about seeing her sometime, uh, sooner rather than later might, might be a good idea. Um, there's one other person I'd like to recognize. I knew that there'd be a surprise for me here, besides my son and his wife coming out. And uh, that's Benita Wicker. Ed Wicker, her husband who passed a few years ago, was one of Dad's uh, great friends, colleagues, and students. And maybe at the reception, she can share a photo she has with her of Dad putting the cap and gown on Ed. And sometime 62, 63, if I got that about right. And so that was a, a great memory for me. So thank you again very much, and appreciate you all. Coming. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jack would get mad at you if you're not careful. Yeah, and I don't want to screw up the sorting. <laughs> you know? So. Okay, well, we're going to uh, now um, unveil the plaque, which will appear in front of the herbarium. Uh, we'd like to invite uh, the family up to uh, participate in this activity. We might also note that uh, we will have tours of the herbarium uh, starting, we'll have one at 1045 and one at 11. Uh, we'll also have, uh, or 1045 or whatever time we get done. Um, I know everybody looking at their watch, you're like, hey, dummy. Um, um, uh, we'll also uh, have a reception upstairs. Uh, again, I do want to uh, thank uh, our alumni and friends staff for putting all of this together. Thanks, and Hanu, I appreciate you recognizing them individually. So, um, so why don't we invite the family up, and I'll move this podium a little bit, and we'll finish up. Maybe I won't move this podium. Maybe I won't move the podium very much. There we go. Okay. Yeah, it's good. All right. Get on one side. Wanting us to lift this you off. Bet. Bit, uh, Go for it. Uh, 
And we all have the red strip. Certainly will lead people to... Perfect. I think Dad would have appreciated his between last word mechanical. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Holland Library, uh, you know, we get, we've get pretty much been kicked out of there. Uh, <laughs> so, with that, we we're, com we're, uh, have completed our ceremony, and we will move to the reception as well as the tours. We do really appreciate everybody's uh, attendance here today. Uh, quite a collection of pathologists, obviously, uh, and, and friends. So, thank you again, and we can move upstairs for some... Refresh.